We're going to be starting on page 41 this evening in the, uh, the real cause of global warming. So we're going to be continuing our education in this subject here. And uh, we're going to first rehearse uh, briefly where the great Kahan left off last week. And he was talking, he was reading in the scriptures in um, Leviticus 18, uh, verses 22 through 30 on pages 40 and 41, where it's talking about the, the customs of the people, the, uh, the, the abominations that they've committed have created, you know, um, conditions to which the earth vomits them out. Okay, like in verse 26 there at the top of page 41, it says, you shall therefore keep my statutes. Now let me go over here to page 40, verse 25. This is Leviticus 18, 25. For the world is defiled because they have given themselves over to sin and the land itself vomits out her inhabitants. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and you must not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation, nor of the stranger that sojourns among you. For all these abominations have the people of the land done, who were before you, and thus the land is defiled or unholy. Or the land will vomit you out if you defile it, as it vomited out the nations that were before you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, the person who commits them shall be cut off from among his people. Therefore, you shall keep my ordinance and commit none of these abominable customs which were committed before you and that you and that you do not defile yourself with them. I am Yahweh, your father. OK, so this is where the Kahan pretty much was leaving off last week. So I just wanted to remind you of. The fact that Yahweh had gave the warning, don't do the same things that the people before you did by breaking my laws. Remember Isaiah wrote, the prophet Isaiah wrote in uh, chapter 24, they transgressed the laws, changed the ordinances, and they broke the everlasting covenant. And because they followed the teachings that weren't according to Yahweh's law, it says that the earth is going to be burned and few men are left. Okay? Because they didn't keep Yahweh's law, they did not retain Yahweh in their knowledge. And Yahweh tells us not to do those things which causes the earth to reject us. Remember, in Genesis, uh, Genesis chapter 3, 3 or 4, it shows that the earth will no longer yield its strength to man. Okay, because we haven't been guarding and keeping the way of life that Yahweh tells us, the way that Yahweh tells us to do it. Okay, mankind has gone its own way and has brought forth this sickness and this perversion and this confusion you know, because of, you know, our own way of doing things, leaning on our own understanding, you know, but then the question is asked, you know, what is life? You know, what's my purpose in life? Why am I here? And it's like Yahweh gives us the answers in the Holy Scriptures, but yet mankind in his, you know, how to pass, what is it, the, uh, the intellectual idiots, okay, in their own understanding, they come up with things that bring forth more death but yet they're talking about how bright the future is and, and the technology that we're creating here. So on page 41 here in the, the, um, the second column, it says, notice the following mistranslated words in Revelations 18.1. Okay, so let's read 18.1 here. It says, after these things, I saw another mallet come down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was enlightened with his glory. So it says that uh, the Gesenius Hebrew Chaldee lexicon on pages 569 and 570 shows that the word Malik means one sent, messenger of Yahweh. The Hebrew Aramaic English Dictionary by Marcus Jastro, volume 1, page 786, shows this word means teacher, able. A Hebrew and Chaldee lexicon to the Old Testament by Julius I, page 813, shows it means priest. The word heaven translated from the Hebrew root word Shem, according to a Hebrew and Chaldee lexicon to the Old Testament, page uh, 1402, means Yahweh. The word earth from the Hebrew word Aratz means this, this world. According to a Hebrew and Chaldee lexicon to the Old Testament, page 153, the word enlightened from the Hebrew word awar, awar means truth and revelation. This is shown in a Hebrew and Chaldee lexicon to the Old Testament on page 44. The word glory is translated from kabod, which means he who honors the law, Israel. Now, years ago, it might have been years ago, 
pretty sure it's years ago. In a newsletter or a prophetic word, pastor was expounding on what his name means. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, he said it means uh, it's a position or an opportunity for a position in the kingdom. Does anyone remember that newsletter or prophetic word? It was like on the first page, I think. It's a, it's a position or an opportunity for a position in the kingdom. Okay, and remember what Yisrael means. It means he who rules as Yahweh rules. Okay, so that's actually a position in Yahweh's kingdom. We're all learning how to rule or to govern and guide and teach as Yahweh governs and guides and teaches. We're all learning how to be Yisrael, how to be like Yahweh. Okay, and of course it is talking about the man himself, but the name also represents a position. Okay, an opportunity for a position. This is found in the Hebrew Aramaic English Dictionary on page 606 and 607. In Revelations 18.5, the word heaven is translated from shemim and means heavens, that is, the firmament. This is found in Gesenius Hebrew and Chaldee Lexicon on page 1083. So the correct translation is as follows. Revelations 18, 1 through 5. And after these things, I saw, a, I saw at Abel a priest, a teacher, the one sent from Yahweh. He had great authority. For the whole world revealed the truth by Israel, who reverenced Yahweh and his laws. He cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of demons, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth have grown rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out, of, come out of her, my people, so that you do not partake of her sins, so that you do not receive of her plagues. For her sins have reached into the firmament, and Yahweh has remembered her iniquities. And remember when it says that uh, he cried with a strong voice, Babylon the great is fallen. You know, that word fallen means failing. Okay, and again, this is what Pastor's been telling us from day one, that this system, okay, this system is failing. This way of life is failing. These teachings, other than the teachings that come from the laws of Yahweh, is failing. Okay, they don't lead to life. Continuing on here on page 42, it says, Carefully read Revelations 18, 5 again, for her sins have reached into the firmament. Sin causes sickness and disease. The scientists and doctors know that breaking the laws of health causes sickness and disease. They also admit that fornication, adultery, bestiality, homosexuality, and sodomy causes sexually transmitted diseases. STDs do, the, do just that. They transmit to everything they touch. And the word transmit means to, uh, to send or convey from one person or place to another to cause, to allow, to spread, to convey by or as if by inheritance or heredity, to hand down. And the, one of the sad things about this is like when, when, you, when you think about the STDs or the curses that are handed down or passed down to the children genetically from their parents, it's because their parents didn't, uh, they didn't keep the laws of Yahweh, whether they rejected the laws of Yahweh or whether they just didn't know the laws of Yahweh. Regardless, the, the unborn children, they suffer, okay? They're born with various STDs, various um, birth defects, you know, blindness, missing limbs, whatever it is, you know. Even, even children are, are born stuck together, you know. I mean, there's, there's, there's no, you know, limit to the problems that, that take place with the, with the children because of parents' neglect to keep Yahweh's law. And Yahweh warns us, look. When you break my laws, these things will go forth or be passed down from generation to generation, you know, to the third and fourth generation. And that will continue to go from generation to generation until someone stops. Okay, and in these last days, it's stopping right here, okay, with us in Yahweh's house in these last days. But up until now, it's been passed down from generation to generation, okay? That's why Pastor has been telling us look, everyone, everyone born has some form of a birth defect, something, okay, whether they acknowledge it or not. Because Yahweh said so. He said, look, if you break these laws, you're going to get something. Okay? You didn't escape a curse. You did not escape a curse. We have not escaped any of the curses. We haven't escaped all of the curses, I should say. 
Continuing on here, it says, Now remember this, in 1 Yachinah 3, 4, Whoever commits sin transgresses also the laws, for sin is the transgression of the laws. 18, 5, For her sins have reached into the firmament, and Yahweh has remembered her iniquities. Okay, Yahweh has remembered her iniquities. Why? Again, because they've transgressed the laws, they changed the ordinances, and they broke the everlasting covenant. Okay, because of this, because they followed the teachings of the Catholic Church. They followed a system other than the system that Yahweh set up for them that would lead them unto life. What would be in the firmament that these sins, what would be in the firmament that these sins would or could reach and make sick? The answer is obvious. The micro kingdoms that govern every aspect of the firmament for mankind. Because remember, the earth was created for who? For man, right? It was created for man. And then Yahweh says, you know, keep my Sabbaths and I will show you how to take care of these things which are going to take care of you. Okay, so meet with me and I will teach you what you need to do. You know, I will teach you how to guard and keep this way. But if you don't meet with Yahweh when he says to meet with him, what are you going to learn? <laughs> You're going to learn those things which lead to death. You know, evil, right? Our minds are going to be darkened. <laughs> Continuing on here. It says, scientists are getting closer to proving what Yahweh has said thousands of years ago is true and that we are far from the great wisdom of Yahweh. Now, that, that statement right there alone is like Pastor would say, you know, you could bring a thousand sermons on that alone. We are far from the great wisdom of Yahweh. We are far from the great wisdom of Yahweh. Let's see. Oops. just want to read a scripture here. In Proverbs chapter 25, verse 2, it says that the glory of Yahweh lies in what he conceals, but the glory of kings lies in the matters they search out, like the heavens for height and the earth for depth, so the minds of kings are beyond searching. Now remember what it says in Proverbs 31, right? 31 verse 1, it says, To those who will reign as priests and kings belonging to Yahweh, the prophecies the house of Yahweh will teach them. Okay, so if you're going to be a king or a priest or a king or a priestly king, then you're going to be trained where at? The house of Yahweh, right? And then what did we just read? It says that the glory of Yahweh lies in what he conceals, but the glory of kings lies in the matters that they search out. So what does Isaiah 34, 16 say? Search out, right? Search out the book of Yahweh. Search out. So if we read that right after this, the glory of the glory of Yahweh lies in what he conceals, but the glory of kings who are being trained at Yahweh's house who belong to Yahweh, the glory of kings lies in the matters that they search out of the book of Yahweh. Okay? I mean, the last two words in that scripture are the first two words in Isaiah 34, 16. And it's guiding us so that we can be a part of this great wisdom that comes from Yahweh. But you see what Pastor said here? It says scientists are figuring out now that... Um, that what the scripture says, that Yahweh says thousands of years ago, is true. And we're far away from the great wisdom of Yahweh. Far from it. But if you search out the book of Yahweh and read, you know, you can have this great wisdom. Because pastors revealing these things to us, just like the scripture said that he would. And where did he get his information from, he says? From the scriptures. He said, I read, I, I learned this back when I was like seven years old, you know, like fishing with his little salt bag and everything, you know, like, you know, understanding the way of Yahweh. Okay, that inspiration comes from Yahweh. Okay, and we can have that same, you know, connection or a similar connection to Yahweh if we apply ourselves and join ourselves or tether ourselves to the choices branch. Okay, that's what Yahweh is offering us in these last days, this great wisdom that only comes from him. Okay, we can't lean on our own understanding and expect to become, you know, great. Okay, the scriptures say you're great if you do what? Keep these laws and teach others to do so. Or you will be least or not, not around at all, remember? Continuing on here, notice the drawings on page four showing what occurs when, H, when the HIV AIDS virus transmits to bacteria or other viruses. And you can see the picture there. We're not going to read it. But it shows, uh, you know, this virus attacking something else, you know, a, 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 a microorganism. And you can see uh, 
by the time you get to the bottom of page 43, the last, the last picture there, that the, the disease or the virus or whatever multiplied and actually destroyed the, uh, the host organism, okay? Because that's what these things do, okay? The curses lead to death, okay? The things that we create outside of keeping Yahweh's law leads to death. Troubles in the firmament are growing. Troubles in the firmament are growing. Please look at Leviticus and notice that sin, sin affects the human mind much like it affects the firmament. The mind works along, along, the mind works along with the whole nervous system to protect and even heal the body. Things like touching something unclean, the mind and nervous system can clean up and repair in a matter of hours as we see or as, as shown in Leviticus chapter 11, verses 7 through 8 and 25 through 28. It says, And the pig, although it, it has a split hoof, completely divided, yet it does not chew the cud, it is unclean to you. Their meat you shall not eat, and their carcasses you shall not touch. They are unclean to you. So I wonder who in their great wisdom decided that the pig was okay to eat. You know, they, they blame Jesus for that. And say that, you know, all things are clean to eat because that's not something that Yeshua did. OK, but the bottom line is that, you know, uh, the, the, the mind that's called out by Yahweh, we can look at the world today and we can see that, you know, when you do, when you break these laws, we see the curses that they bring. I mean, Yahweh says bear witness to these things. You know, we're bearing witness to what takes place when you do not keep Yahweh's law. And we're bearing witness to what takes place when you keep Yahweh's law. So we can see the defilement. We see the confusion in the mind. We see the, 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 the famines, the, the pestilence. We see all, all of these different things that Yahweh said we would see in these last days, you know, because people are not keeping these laws. You know, is there anyone here that can't see what's going on in the world and, and, and see that is linked to, to sin, the breaking of Yahweh's law? I mean, we, should, we all see that, right? Praise Yahweh. Verse 25, whoever, pick, whoever picks up one of their carcasses must wash his clothes and be unclean until sunset. The carcass of every animal which does not have a split hoof completely divided and which does not chew the cud is unclean for you. Everyone who touches its carcass shall be unclean. Of all the animals that walk on all fours, Those that walk on their paws are unclean for you. Whoever touches any such carcass shall be unclean until sunset. Whoever picks up their carcass shall wash his clothes and be unclean until sunset. They are unclean to you. Okay, so like the, the point Pastor is trying to prove there is that, you know, you were created in a way to where if you touch something that was unclean, you know, if you went through the proper procedure, if you cleaned yourself up, if you washed, if you bathed yourself, wash your clothes, at sunset, you'd be clean. Your body will take care of that stuff, okay? But, you know, it's different when you're, like, eating stuff, just shoveling unclean things in there because now it's working on a whole different level. Okay, it's working on a whole different level, especially when you're doing it continuously. Now, if something accidentally gets in there, your body can handle that. But when you're being bombarded, when you're bombarding yourself with, with this poison, you know, you're going to suffer, you know, the organ failure, the organ damages and things like that. The, the various curses that come from, you know, eating the unclean thing. It says, however, eating pork is much like committing a sexual act with someone who is infected with STDs. Now, think about that. Okay, let me read that one more time. However, eating pork is much like committing a sexual act with someone who is infected with STDs. No, so when you go out and you get that uh, that 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 burger or or that sandwich from from one of these places, you know, just think, you know, I'm about to go get me like this nice fat STD sandwich. Because really, that's what it is. Okay, now is it exactly the same thing? No, Pastor's not saying it's the same thing, but it has the same effect. Okay, it causes confusion in the mind. Okay, the same effect. Okay, and is that serious? It's that serious. Eating the unclean thing is the same thing as having a, a, a sexual act, committing a sexual act with someone who is infected with STDs. I mean, we probably never even really, really looked at it like that. Okay, but that's how serious and how dangerous it is. 
It's that serious. What we put into our bodies by way of food is just as, as dangerous as, as, as committing this unlawful, um, having this unlawful relationship. The microorganisms in either can and do go to the brain and cause confusion. Notice in Leviticus 18 verse 23, neither shall you have sexual relations with any animal and defile yourself along with it. Neither shall any woman present herself to have sexual relations with an animal. It is confusion and perversion. And that word confusion, it means mixture. That's one of the meanings of it. It means a mixture, okay, a mixture, you know, not pure. Okay, and remember from the very beginning, you know, the teachings were, you know, don't partake in that tree, which is a mixture of righteousness and evil. Okay, don't partake in that mixture because that mixture leads to death. Okay, now, when you're looking at it on a larger scale, Yahweh simplified it with, look, if you keep these teachings, you'll have life. But if you partake in this mixture, there's a lot of different mixtures that you can partake in that leads to death. Okay, and you see that in the 4,000, what is it, 4,199 different religions. Okay, they're all different, but they're all a mixture, and they all lead to death. So this one here will say, you know, well, we need to keep, you know, we need to keep the dietary laws, but, you know, they may be for same-sex marriage. Mixture leads to death. Okay, this one may say, well, you know, a, a, a marriage is between a man and a woman, but we don't keep the dietary laws. Mixture. So whatever it is, you know, it leads to death. No mixtures, okay? And that's what this word confusion means. It's a mixture, okay? It's, it's taken away from the way that Yahweh created, you know, life. So continuing on, you know, when you, when you think about, um, matter of fact, I'm thinking about that example in, um, in Chagia. And remember, you know, Yahweh said, um, ask the priest, okay? Ask the priest if, um, let, let me read that. Let me read it. Where's Chagia? It's chapter 2. Oh, here it is. It's page 716. And I'll explain why I was thinking about this scripture here in a moment. It says, this is what Yahweh of hosts at, uh, says. Ask the priests now concerning the law and say to them, if one carries holy meat in the fold of his garment and with the fold of his garment touches bread, stew, wine, oil, or any other meat, will they become holy? And the priest answered and said, no, holiness is is not infectious. Then Chagia asks, but if he, but if one who is ceremonially unclean by a dead body touches any of these, will they be unclean? And the priest answered and said, what he touches will be unclean. Unholiness is infectious. Okay, and so when we're, when we're talking about the, the confusion and the perversion and the STDs and the things that spread, okay, those things spread from person to person into the firmament, into the water, and this is what we're covering, okay? And so I was thinking about that scripture because, you know, the unclean thing, it spreads. And Yahweh says, don't do what they do because it spreads. Separate from it because it spreads. Okay, so the unclean thing spreads. Righteousness, you can't, you can't touch something and then it's, it's, it's holy, it's righteous, right? I mean, we just read it. Uncleanness spreads. Think about it like this. If you have a, um, a cup of a, a glass of strychnine, okay, and a glass of water, okay, you pour the water in the strychnine, the clean water, does that make that strychnine clean to drink? Not at all. But you take that strychnine and you pour it in that water, is that water okay to drink? No. So the bad stuff made the okay stuff bad. But the great stuff can't make the bad stuff great. Okay, this is the law of Yahweh. Okay, so these things are dangerous, and Yahweh says, come out from among them so that you don't receive these plagues. Okay, we have to separate ourselves as much as we possibly can so that we do not partake or receive the curses that come from these things that spread. Okay, we can't be a cause of, of, of spreading these things as well. We have to come out of that, that lifestyle itself. Okay, and this is the teaching. Yahweh is showing us how to separate ourselves from those things which leads to death. Top of page 44. In Romans chapter 1, verses 21 through 22, 24, and 26 through 32. Because that when they knew Yahweh, they did not glorify him as father, nor were thankful. Okay, and remember, 
Okay, this is a key right here, being thankful. Okay, being thankful. Remember uh, the series of sermons, um, and I think it was law classes also, be, becoming, uh, what is it, being thankful and becoming holy. And I remember pastor said, uh, I think we just talked about this recently also, isn't a pot with no handle better than what? Right, a pot with no handle is better than no pot at all. Okay, so it's like you, you just need to be thankful for whatever you have, being thankful for the blessings that he always given us. You know, I mean, having sandals or having shoes with tape on them are better than having no shoes at all. I mean, especially in the wintertime. Okay, when it's like snow and ice, who wants to walk around with no socks and shoes on? So even if your shoes have holes in them, hey, at least you have some shoes on. Okay, but it's all, it's all a matter of just, you know, how you look at things, though. You know, are you thankful for, you know, everything that you have? Or, you know, well, Kahan Kohilif got on some nice shoes. Okay, well, you know, praise Yahweh. I don't really think that they're that nice, but I'm thankful that I have some shoes. But, I mean, you know, why are we looking at each other and worrying about what someone else has? You know, that's a problem. Okay, if you want nice shoes, then get you some nice shoes. Or wait till Yahweh bless you in the kingdom and get nice shoes in the kingdom, whatever. You know, but be thankful for what you have. Okay, and if you're not thankful for what you have, let's finish reading and see what takes place when you're not thankful but became idolatrous God worshipers and their reasoning and their senseless minds were darkened. Okay, so how do your mind become darkened? Okay, one way is forgetting about Yahweh. Okay, the first thing we saw there was not being thankful. Not being thankful. For, the first thing you should really be thankful for is the fact that you're in Yahweh's house in these last days. That's the first thing you should be thankful for. <laughs> Praise Yahweh. Okay, and then after that, then you should start being thankful because Yahweh's allowing you to pay attention to the different things that he's done for you. Okay? One of the best things that he's doing for you, whether you're thankful for it or not, is providing you, allowing you to go through various tests and trials that build his character in you. You should be so thankful for the tests and trials. Okay? You should, be so, you should be thanking Father Yahweh for allowing you to go through the tests and trials. Even when you fail, thank you, Father Yahweh, for showing that to me. I'm going to do better. He's given us confessions to apologize for our shortcomings. Okay, praise Yahweh. So our Father wants us to succeed, but we have to change the way that we see these things in order to be successful. So continuing on here, you know, they removed Yahweh's name. Their minds were darkened. Okay, so professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, simpletons. So what does the scripture say? What, how does the scriptures define a fool? Here's a clue. Luke 24, 25. O fools of slower heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Okay, so they didn't retain Yahweh in their knowledge. They became fools. They didn't believe the teachings. Okay, they stopped believing the teachings. That's how they became fools. Okay, and so then they started doing what? You know, genetically mo uh, modified foods, you know, taking pig hearts and putting them in man, growing ears on the back of rats. I mean, like, come on. You know, I mean, and the experiments go on and on and on, okay? But scripturally speaking, <laughs> they're fools because they stop believing the teachings, okay? They stop guarding and keeping the things that, you know, the way that Yahweh said to guard and keep. And now you're putting a pig heart in your body? This is modern science, man. It says, therefore, Yahweh also gave them up, uh, gave them up for the uncleanness through their lust of their own minds to dishonor their own bodies between them. So mind and body. For this reason, Yahweh gave them up to the degrading passions, up to degrading passions. For even their women exchanged the natural use into that which is against nature. And the men did the same thing, leaving the natural use of the woman. They burned in their lust for one another, men committing shameful acts with men, and suffering in their own bodies the penalty for their error. Okay, and what did Yeshua say about that? He says, you err because what? Because you do not know the scriptures. Okay, you err because you do not know the scriptures, which is their fitting retribution. And so, since they did not like to retain Yahweh in their knowledge, it came to pass that they were, they were given over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not proper. And a reprobate mind is a mind that, that rejects, it refuses, it, it actually declines. Okay, it's, it's, not, it's not acceptable. Verse 29, 
it, it says, uh, verse 29, causing to arise all unrighteousness, sexual impurity, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. <laughs> now remember, what was the first thing that we read at the very top there? Okay, let's, let's read verse 21 one more time. It says, because that when they knew Yahweh, they did not like to, they did not glorify him as father, nor were thankful. Then they became all of these things. Okay, I wanted to stop and read that again so that you can see what takes place when you're not thankful. Okay, not being thankful is the start of all of these problems. Okay, it's the start of all of these problems. So we're going to continue on because there's a lot more, uh, uh, a lot more problems that you'll have when you're not thankful. Okay, there are gossips, backbiters, slanderers, haters of Yahweh, despiteful, arrogant, and boastful. They are inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, and without understanding. They are covenant breakers, without natural affection, truce breakers, and unmerciful, who knowing, who knowing the righteous judgment of Yahweh, that those who practice such things deserve death, not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. Okay, so if you're not thankful to Yahweh, if you're not thankful to be in Yahweh's house, this is what you have to look forward to before you die. Okay, so what kind of a future can you hope for if you're not counting your blessings right now? Learn to count your blessings and to be thankful for whatever it is that Yahweh has given you. Whether you think it's a lot or not, it doesn't matter. You know, Yahweh has blessed us with life and he has given us understanding and he has given us the opportunity to see what he's offering us in the kingdom. Okay, all we have to do is apply ourselves and get there. And then he says there'll be no more sorrow, no more tears, no more death. Okay, that's something to work towards, men. Okay, that's something to definitely work towards. Continuing on here, verse 24 shows that they followed their own lust which led them to confusion and therefore became fools, not believing and following the inspired prophets. In verse 32, we see that the priest or preachers and everyone else not only committed, commit the mentioned sins, but also take pleasure in them by watching them on television and movies, etc. Due to these confused minds and, and the practice of these sins, STDs are created and transmit it to everything and everyone they touch. Okay, you see that? Everything and everyone they touch. Confusion. Each time someone shoots a child, a bunch of children, or even a bunch of adults, people shake their heads and ask, why? 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 You know, and, and they get on the news and they say, why? That's all they do, why? Okay, why? You know? Why would God let all of these kids be killed? Why would God do this? Why would God do... Why? <laughs> but they really don't want to be told the real reason why. Why? Because they themselves are a part of the problem and do not desire to repent. The whole world with all of its religions stand in the same boat and it's sinking. Okay, so what did Pastor just say right there? He said they're all standing in the same boat and it's sinking. What he's saying right there is Babylon is failing. Okay, this system is failing. You know, you want to know why all of these people are dying? Because you're not teaching them righteousness. Okay, you're teaching them, the, you know, to do the very things that they're all doing. And then you're saying, why are they killing people? Because you're teaching them to kill people. Well, how? Okay, well, you're not going to learn that in one Sabbath service. So meet with Yahweh every week so that you can learn these things on a regular basis. Okay, we've been here for years. Okay, learning, you know, how to come out from among that system. And we're still learning. Okay, because conversion takes what, 24 hours? How long does conversion take? A lifetime. Okay, it's a lifelong commitment. And it's something we're going to be doing throughout all of eternity. But we have to start somewhere. Okay, but Babylon is sinking. It's failing. The whole world is guilty of the sexual sins mentioned in Leviticus 18, verses 22 through 27. These sins cause much more than sickness and disease in people. STDs mutate, breed, and mutate some more. They get into the earth, the livestock, the water, which sickens whole, whole schools of fish 
and other aquaculture. In fact, aquatic plants and animals are dying from what man has bred through forbidden lusts that are shown in the inspired scriptures. They suffer in their bodies. Now notice in Romans chapter 1 verses 17 through 19. For in this message is the righteousness of Yahweh revealed, originating from the faith and leading to the faith, as it is written, the just will live by the faith. And so what is the faith? The faith is living by the every word of Yahweh. Right? Pastor said that. He said it's as simple as that. The faith is living by the every word of Yahweh. Everything that Yahweh says, you do, right? So these are the ten suggestions of Yahweh, right, in Exodus? Or are they the ten commandments? The ten commandments, they're not the ten suggestions. He didn't say... Maybe if you honor your mother and father, you'll have long life. He didn't say, maybe thou shall not kill. Okay? No. You shall not kill. You shall not murder. Okay? You shall not murder. You shall, you shall honor your mother and father, and you'll have long life. The Ten Commandments. What does the word commandment mean? It means to teach. These are the teachings. Okay? These are the teachings. Continuing on here. Oh, in verse 17, it says, for in this message is the righteousness of Yahweh revealed. And what is righteousness? Righteousness is the keeping of the law, right? Okay. And so the men who are in, in the classes, I know some of you are going to get this. Okay. So righteous, to be righteous is the act of doing what's right. Okay. So what scripture am I thinking of? Nope. Psalms 33, 4. <laughs> Praise Yahweh. Psalms 33, 4. Okay, the laws of Yahweh are right, and all of his works are done in truth. Psalms 33, 4. So the, the, to be righteous is the, is the act of doing what's right, and the laws of Yahweh are right. So when you keep Yahweh's laws, it makes you righteous, just like Yahweh is righteous. So what it's saying here is that the, for in this message is the righteousness of Yahweh or the character of Yahweh, it's revealed. Okay. Through these teachings, you can see Yahweh. You get to know Yahweh. He who says, I know Yahweh, but does not keep his law is what? A liar. How can you know Yahweh when you don't keep his law? You know, Deuteronomy 6.25 is the next scripture here that we're going to get into. But it says it's our righteousness if we keep these laws. Okay, we'll have that same character of Yahweh when we keep these laws. Okay, we will know Yahweh when we keep these laws. If you don't keep these laws, you don't know them. You're a liar. Yeshua said in Matithia, not Matithia, in Yachanah chapter, chapter 8. I don't want to misquote it. Let's read it. Yachanah chapter 8. Yachanah chapter 8. Yes, uh, let's see here. Oh, that's, oh, that's 6. I'm wondering. Here it is. Is this eight? Yes. Okay. So Yachanah chapter eight, look at verse 55. Yachanah 855 on page 825 in your book of Yahweh. It says, for you have not known him, but I know him. So if I would say I do not know him, I would be a liar just like you. But I know him and I keep his laws. Okay. So Yeshua acknowledged, he said, look, if I said I did know him, I would be lying to you but I know him and I keep his law. Those are Yeshua's words. I keep his law. Okay, in other areas of the scriptures, Yeshua said, I made your name openly known. I teach your name and I keep your laws, Yahweh. Okay, which is totally against what the, what the world teaches. You know, no, he, never, he doesn't use the name of the creator. No, he doesn't keep the laws. No, Yeshua says, I made your name openly known. I know him and I keep his laws. You're the liars. You know, Mr. 4,199 religions. <laughs> They're the ones that's lying, okay? But the character of Yahweh is revealed in this message, in these teachings, and we will have that same character if we follow these teachings. Verse, nine, uh, verse 18. For the judgment of Yahweh is revealed from heaven against all unholiness and unrighteousness. And unrighteousness. Oh, my pages are folded over, excuse me. And the unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. So what's the truth? The laws of Yahweh, right? Psalms 119, 142, 151, right? So what are they suppressing? The laws of Yahweh. Okay, so these are the men who suppress the laws of Yahweh in unrighteousness. 
Okay, so you see why, why it's important for the, to, to let Scripture interpret Scripture? You know, here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept. Okay, so when you, when you understand the writings in the Scriptures and you see how Yahweh uses words and how they're inter interchangeable in the Scriptures, you know, it gives you a greater understanding of, of, the, of the message. And this, again, this is how the character of Yahweh is revealed. Okay, because they're suppressing the law. Okay, they're suppressing the truth of the matter. Verse 19, for that which is known about Yahweh is manifested to them or made openly known to them because Yahweh has shown it to them. And so how does Yahweh show it to us? Through the law. But is it only through the law? Can we just sit down and read the law and, and have this great understanding? What is it that we need in these last days? What is it that we're always going to need? A teacher. We're going to need a teacher, right? We always need a teacher. Remember that. Okay, and guess what you're training to become? Teachers. Teachers. Don't forget it. Israel, an opportunity for a position in the kingdom. Okay, guiding, leading, and inspiring just like Yahweh does. Okay, we're all training to be Israel Hawkins, the priest who guide and rule as Yahweh rules. Okay, you see how big that is? Okay, pastor, you know, he's our example in these last days, and we're all training to be just like that man. Okay, who's training to be just like Yahshua? who was training and still is training to be just like Yahweh. Well, he's like Yahweh, so don't mis misunderstand me when I say that. You know, we're all still, you know, aspiring to become just like Yahweh in every way. You know, Yahweh's still learning and growing. Okay, still learning and growing in knowledge and wisdom and things like that. He's, his character is, is set. His character is perfect. He's, he's completely righteous. Okay, and this is what we need to learn how to do. Okay, this is what we need to learn how to do. Verse 17, righteousness. Deuteronomy 6.25, and it will be our righteousness if we observe to do all of these laws before Yahweh our Father as he has commanded us. Because again, what is Yahweh doing, you know, with these laws? These laws are producing in us his character, okay, which fulfills what he says in Genesis what? 1 what? 1.26, I will make mankind in my image according to my likeness, okay? And these are the laws that's going to build that character in them. Okay, so without his laws, how are you going to be anything like Yahweh? You're not. Okay, you're going to be just like the adversary, which we already know we were like that before the laws of Yahweh. Everyone in this room, everyone who's listening knows that without the laws of Yahweh, we were just like the adversary. Okay, there's no one alive that can say that they have never done anything wrong. Okay, and if you say that, you're lying to yourself. You're not going to fool anyone you talk to. You're not going to fool anyone you're talking to, but you can try to trick yourself if you want to, okay? First Yachanah 3, 4, verses, Yachanah, first Yachanah chapter 3, verses 4, 7 through 8, and 10. Whoever commits sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the laws. Little children, let no man deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who commits sin is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the son of Yahweh was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. And so how do you destroy the works of the devil? Exactly. You teach. You teach against it. Okay. You teach against it. You teach righteousness. That's how you destroy the works of the devil. Okay. And so has all of the works of the devil been totally destroyed yet? Not yet. Okay. So the work isn't finished yet. Okay, and we already know that, right? The work isn't finished yet. We have a part in this work in these last days, joined with our high priest, Yahshua, and is going to fulfill that, destroying the works of the devil. And then the scripture says that, you know, the last enemy that's going to be put to, to death is what? Death itself. Okay, there'll be no more death. Okay, that's our job. Okay, our job is life. The family business of Yahweh is life itself. Okay. Do you want to be a part of that family business? Praise Yahweh. Okay, so we have to learn how to guard and keep life. Verse 10, And this, the children of Yahweh and the children of the devil are manifest or made openly known. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of Yahweh and he does not love his neighbor. Okay, so if you're not practicing righteousness, if you're not practicing these laws, then there is no love in you. Okay, these are the words of Yahweh. Okay, remember, Yahweh inspired these words to be written. There's no way around it, okay? There's no way around it. 
If you're not keeping these laws, you do not love your neighbor. You cannot love your neighbor. It's impossible for you to love your neighbor. You can't. If there's a mixture, there's no love there because it leads to death. True love is the perfect way of Yahweh. Okay, true love is the perfect way of Yahweh. And it's the only way to have a, a eternal life. It's the only way to have true joy, peace, and abundant living the way that Yahweh says that we can have it. Now in Romans 1 verse 18, it says, For the judgment of Yahweh is revealed from heaven against all unholiness, unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. So all the world now suppresses righteousness. Okay, and so again, righteousness is what? The laws, right? The keeping of the laws. So the laws is what it takes. It's what's necessary to become like Yahweh. Okay, so this is what they're suppressing. They're suppressing what it takes to become like Yahweh. They're trying to stop people from becoming like Yahweh. Simple as that. It's as simple as that. They're trying to suppress the information that's necessary to change us from the adversary to be in unity with Yahweh. So Yahweh's laws that show the truth about what actually is defiling your body, the earth, the dirt, water, and air, the firmament, are suppressed. Okay, these things are suppressed. The information that we need to have life is suppressed. So in essence, what they're suppressing is the way to life. They're suppressing life. Okay, they're bringing forth death. And remember, in Yahweh's great plan, okay, Yahweh's great plan is a plan for what? Life. Okay, life. And this is why we're going through everything that we're going through. Okay, because there is life before mankind you know, was ever placed on this earth, okay? And we already know what the scripture says concerning that. You know, Yahweh stands in the, assembly of, in the assembly of the gods and says, you know, you understand nothing, you know nothing. You know, you're supposed to be taking care of the, the needs, you know, and the rights of the poor and the oppressed and so on, okay? But yet, you know, you strengthen the hands of evildoers, okay? Yahweh didn't teach that, okay? That's not Yahweh's way, okay? So the plan, Yahweh says, I'm going to make man in my image according to my likeness, and I'm going to give them rulership. Okay, they're going to be just like me, and they're going to guard and keep this way of life. They're going to be protectors. They're going to be, you know, inspirations to, to, to all of creation. And now all of creation is waiting for what? All of creation is waiting for the revealing of the sons of Yahweh. Okay, they're desperately waiting for Yahweh's children to save them. Okay, to deliver them out of the sickness and the disease and the bondage of sin that they're in. They want to be delivered from that bondage of sin. Okay, and this is what we're training for. So you're not thankful? <laughs> you know, you got tape on your shoes? Man, y'all, if you could just let shoes rain down like manna. Really? Come on, man. You know, we have so much to look forward to. Okay, we're in the worst time period in the history of mankind. And yet we're thriving in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Again, it's how you look at these things, you know. Okay, we might be a little hungry. Even after I eat, I'm still hungry. What do they, what do they say? They say 30 minutes before your brain recognizes that you have something to eat. So even after you eat something, you're still hungry. These are normal things in life, man. You know, being hungry, being cold, you know, being too hot. You know, be thankful that you're alive to even feel any of that stuff and that you have an opportunity to usher in the kingdom of Yahweh, which is going to usher in everlasting righteousness and peace. Okay, we have so many great things to look forward to that we can blow it all by complaining about nothing. Foolishness, absolute foolishness. Okay, and we're going to be sick with ourselves, you know, when we're standing in judgment and we realize that we complained ourselves out of the kingdom of Yahweh because we were not thankful. Continuing on here, it says they suffer in their bodies because they rebel against Yahweh's health laws that would guide them away from sickness and disease. Their diseases, or STDs, do not stay with them. They pass, from one, they pass them on to others. Uh, they are also flushed into the waters and passed into the earth and the heavens, the firmament. Therefore, every living thing suffers from mankind's sins. Okay, every living thing suffers from mankind's sins. Okay, it spreads. We covered that earlier. It spreads. Okay, it doesn't stay in one place. Okay, and we, we, um, we went through um, 
a lot of training in that concerning the shadow of death. Y'all remember that training that we went through? Trying to, trying to stay clean? <laughs> I remember like the, the very first time that we went through it and I was done in like the first five minutes. You know, and it wasn't, you know, I, I want to say it wasn't my fault, but, <laughs> it, it, you know, different circumstances, different situations, you know, and not guarding certain things, you know, it's just like, wow, oh, man, where did that come from? Yeah, Kahan, so to, uh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you're going to be in the SOD tent. And if, it's, it's just, <laughs> praise Yahweh. I think I was the first one over there. The very first piece, I was like the first one over there. And you know what, though? Honestly, man, to this day, that was one of my most enjoyable feasts ever. Okay? Praise Yahweh. And not, not because, and I'm going to share with you why, though. Not because I was SOD. <laughs> it, was the, it was my most enjoyable feast ever because, you know, me and the other men that were over there, we were tasked with, you know, making sure, you know, to keep the rest of the grounds clean. Okay? To make sure none of our other brethren, you know, became, you know, contaminated by, you know, the shadow of death. And so it was fun you know, being called on to do a bunch of things that, you know, those of you who were in the sanctuary, the things that you couldn't do. So it was like, um, Kohila, Deacon Kohila, we need you to do this. All right, I'm there. You know, grab a couple men, and then we're getting things done. It was, it was so fun and enjoyable, and it gave me another perspective, you know, in Yahweh's house, okay? And so that whole feast was, it was just all servitude, and it was just, well, every feast is like that, but for me, that one was just, because I was SOD, it just, it was just, it was different and really, really, really enjoyable. So confusion it says they all suppress, they all suppress the truth that shows you why mankind is suffering. Confusion of the mind in this time period. Okay, what is causing confusion and perversion? Leviticus eighteen twenty three. Neither shall you have sexual relations with any animal and defile yourself along with it. Neither shall any woman present herself to have sexual relations with any animal. It is confusion and perversion. Okay, so you can see here this unlawful situation right here causes what? Confusion and perversion. Okay, confusion and perversion. And what did that word, um, what was it? Confusion, what did that mean again? Mixture, right. And so let's see here. Um, I was looking, for, okay, here, back on page 42. Back on page 42. That paragraph right above Leviticus 18.23, I want to read that one more time so that we don't forget this. However, eating pork is much like committing a sexual act with someone who is infected with STDs. The microorganisms, um, the, the, the microorganisms in either can and do go to the brain and cause confusion. Okay, so I didn't want to forget about the unclean food as we continued on and these other things that causes confusion and perversion. Okay, the unclean food and these unlawful relationships. Now, now read Leviticus 18 verses 20, 22 through 25, 27 and 30. Moreover, you shall have no sexual relations, you shall not have sexual relations with your neighbor's wife to defile yourself along with her. You shall not have sexual relations with a man as with a woman. It, it is an abomination. Neither shall you have sexual relations with any animal and defile yourself along with it. Neither shall any woman present herself to have sexual relations with an animal. It is confusion and perversion. Do not defile yourselves in any of these ways, for this is how the nations who are going to be driven out before you became defiled. So see, it's no secret. These are the things that they did. Okay, these are the teachings that they, uh, that they taught to one another because they didn't retain Yahweh in their knowledge. They became fools, okay? And now, what do we see? Children suffering, who hadn't even made a choice in life yet, suffering. The curses because of the choices of their parents. Okay, some of the children aren't even being born. They're dying in the womb, being stillborn because of the choices that people make in rejecting the laws of life. Verse 25. For the world is defiled because they have given themselves over to sin, and the land itself vomits out her inhabitants. For all these abominations have the people of the land done who were before you, and thus the land is defiled. 
and unholy. Therefore, you shall keep my ordinance and commit none of these abominable customs which were committed before you, and that you do not defile yourself yourselves with them. I am Yahweh your father. Okay, so Yahweh said, look, I am your father. I am the only source of power. Okay, listen to what I'm trying to teach you, or you will die in your sins. Okay, if you do not listen to Yahweh, you will die in your sins. No ands, ifs, or buts about it. You will die. Okay, Yahweh makes it plain and clear. Okay, if you want to go and commit any of these abominations, you're going to die. Now, I don't care how liberal you are. Doesn't matter. Oh, we have the right to do anything. That doesn't make it right. Doesn't make it right. Okay. What does the scripture say is right? Psalms 33, 4. The laws of Yahweh are right. Okay. That's what's right. You have the right to the laws of Yahweh. You have a right to life. You have a right to live in peace and safety. That's what you have a right to. Not to commit abominable acts that's going to lead to death and, and then spread to other people and cause them to die. The law says don't, don't kill, don't murder. But sin, when you sin, you're actually murdering your brother. You're murdering your neighbor. We just read the scripture where it says, it says, he who commits sin does not love his brother. It says, whoever does not practice righteousness is not of Yahweh and does not love his neighbor. That's 1 Yachinah 3 verse 10. Okay, you don't love your neighbor if you commit sin. Verse 20 shows that confusion and perversion begin with illegal sex acts from uncontrolled lust. In verse 27, we see that we see the word land. Remember, the Hebrew word translated land also means firmament. The firmament is made up of micro of micro transparent kingdoms that make up the space called the atmosphere that surrounds the earth. The defilement has reached into the heavens. Her sins, sins brought forth by religious teachings, have reached into the heavens. Her sins are causing confusion on the earth and in the heavens of the firmament. Now remember, I don't know if we read this scripture earlier. Uh, yeah, we, we did. Okay, remember over in, uh, this is Revelations 18. This is on page 42. That's Revelations 18, verse 3. It says, For all nations have drunk the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have grown rich through, her, through the abundance of her delicacies. Okay, they partook in her teachings, and those are the teachings which leads to death. Okay, they're drunk with those teachings. They, they just, they're like, they're, they're enticed by it. They love it. Matter of fact, Uremia, I want to find that really quick here. Uremia chapter 2 or 3. Nope, oh, uh, let's see. Uremia chapter 6, nope, Uremia chapter 5, verse 31. Nope, verse 30. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 30 and 31. An appalling and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely by the lie, by Baal, the Lord, the gods. The priests bear rule by their own authority, and my people just love it. But what will you do in the end? Okay, so what are, what are you going to do in the end? Okay, the priests, they're being ruled by their own authority. Yahweh didn't send them, but yet they ran. But they would have stood in the council of Yahweh then it would have turned them from the evil of their doings, right? But, the, but those priests bear rule by their own authority, and, the, and the, the world, the nations, are drunk with those teachings. And they love it. They love those teachings. But what are you going to do, men? Okay, what are you going to do in these last days? Okay, at the end of mankind's rule, what are we going to do about these things here? What are we going to do about this situation? Well, as for me and my house, man, Those are the crickets because I only heard the young people. I heard one or two adults. So once again, as for me and my house, we will serve Yahweh. That's what we're going to do, man. We're going to bring an end to sin, and we're going to usher in the kingdom of Yahweh, and we're going to be teachers of righteousness forever. Man, we're going to stop there on page 45. Page Yahweh, praise Yahweh. So page 45, the great Kahana pick up there next week. May Yahweh bless your understanding.